I wanted to do uh, something on VPNs since I've heard a lot of everybody ask questions about them and some people know about them, some people don't. So I uh, figured this would be a good kind of high overview of VPNs. And then at the end of it, uh, we're gonna have a demo to show some easy ones to set up and something that we can kind of hope everybody can uh, get the hang of. So if you don't know what a VPN is, a VPN is a virtual private network. It is, uh, it can be just something you have at your house or it can be something that uh, your work sets up, but it creates a private network for you to access the internet through. So there, it essentially creates a tunnel between wherever you're at and the internet to help you protect from hackers or uh, anybody else on the network can't really see what you're looking at. So that goes into why it's important. So it increases online safety, like we said, uh, with protecting against hackers. Uh, without a VPN, you're vulnerable to attacks of those types. And uh, it also hides your internet traffic. Uh, and uh, your data is also encrypted whenever you're on it. So it goes through that tunnel. So a lot of the VPNs that we're talking about are remote access VPNs. If you're at a public hotspot or you're at Starbucks and you connect to a VPN, you're using a remote access VPN that connects to some location where you have your VPN set up. Uh, that's what is the most common. That's what everybody's really familiar with. The site-to-site -site VPNs are primarily whenever you have companies that have multiple sites. So you have uh, multiple locations for your business, but so site-to-site -site VPNs are primarily for a corporate side. You're not really going to set anything like, out, like that up for yourself. With the remote access VPNs, uh, we have three different types that we're kind of going to talk about. You have your self-hosted VPN uh, services. So self-hosted are in your house or on your, on your router or at somebody else's house or something like that. Something that you have set up and you are managing yourself and it connects you to the network at that location. Uh, Cloud-hosted, we can talk about um, AWS or Azure uh, where you're hosting the VPN service there. And then there's also paid VPN services like NordVPN or PureVPN, your most popular ones there. So we listed a few of them here and you can uh, go check them out. The prices can vary, but a lot of them offer a lot more functionality than if you were to set one up yourself unless you wanna put in the extra work. So one of the demos we're gonna get into is uh, OpenVPN or Algo. So um, this is actually, this particular slide is just showing that you can set up an open VPN server on say a spare Windows PC. Uh, the demo that we're actually gonna be doing is setting it up on a significantly smaller device being a little Raspberry Pi. But the benefits of open VPN on your own equipment is it's free server installation, free client installation, unless you go with their enterprise editions. It's not very hard to set up and they've got, you know, guides to set it all up for you. Um, so OpenVPN is mainly used for, you know, the remote type VPN where you're going to be setting it up to access your networks at your home or something like that. Algo is more of a, it's more of one of those sort of paid VPN solutions, although it's set up on its, uh, like you're setting up the paid solution, you're not actually paying someone to do it. So if you have a DigitalOcean account, um, Amazon, Azure, Google Cloud Engine, anything like that, but you say have a developer account on, uh, you can push Algo to one of these one of these cloud hosting environments and then have your own, you know, kind of quote unquote paid system that are a, a lot more, le they're a lot less worrisome than some of your other paid, one, uh, paid subscriptions because they can harvest your data, the, depending on which paid subscriber you go with, they can harvest your data, they can do, uh, they can trace where you're going, they can sell your data. Um, there's a lot that goes into it as far as like you paying for something. You don't know exactly what they're doing depending on which you know, endpoint you're connecting to. Uh, so this get, Algo gives you a single endpoint, you manage it, you deal with it, and you can set it up to be exactly what you want to do. But for our representation of this, you know, our demo, we're just going to be installing it on a Raspberry Pi, very quick, very easy. I have a Windows system set up, um, just a Windows VM set up just for kind of showing how this works on a Windows system, um, the connection. I have terminal open to my Raspberry Pi that's sitting here on my desk. Um, I'm gonna be running Ubuntu server on it. Uh, it's recommended that you use something like Raspbian um, or Diet Pi, something 
that is specifically made for the Pi. Uh, this is just my choice of OS. Um, and then I've got a finder window so that I can pull out the, uh, the data set or the open VPN file, throw it on my computer and show you how uh, some of the other options for the Mac work. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and SSH into my machine. It's already set up, as I said, this is Ubuntu server um, running on the Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a, uh, run it as sudo, uh, curl, L is just for the HTTPS call. Missing things all the time. And I'm going to be using pyvpn.dev. And basically, this is an install script that does almost everything for you, including the uh, instantiation. So if I run this on my machine, basically, it's going to walk me through a process saying this is, you know, if you were to put it on a regular trusted system for a Raspberry Pi, then you wouldn't see this, but yeah, I'm gonna continue. Uh, it's gonna pull some packages in for uh, doing automated updates to the system so you don't have to worry about it to allow tables to be run through, or sorry, IP tables to be run through properly, a bunch of different other things. So it needs a static IP address. Um, or it will pull the DHCP out of uh, your router, which is exactly what we're gonna do. If you, you can use this to install it on multiple different um, kind of hosting platforms and it'll automatically pull in um, the, the static IP address of the machine and also the um, external IP address of the machine, which is kind of nice. So I gotta choose a user that will host my configuration. I just made one called core. This is asking if I want those unattended upgrades. So if you don't necessarily uh, want to manage this 100%, all you have to do is for your security patches and whatnot is go ahead and apply this. Um, and yes, we want to apply security patches. And it's going to restart the service that was installed and it should continue on. All right. So we're going to use U, uh, UDP connection because UDP and TCP, there are two different sort of connection states depending on uh, which routes you're actually running through. Uh, TCP offers uh, a little bit of a difference. If you go through with your SSL connections, UDP uses TLS uh, connections instead of SSL. So we're just going to use uh, UDP since it's just as stable and it's a lot, actually a lot quicker. Uh, we connect to the default port. You can put your own port in here if you don't like the default OpenVPN port. Um, if you're on something that doesn't allow OpenVPN, then you can you know, use something higher in the 30, 40, 50,000 range. And yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So this allows you to uh, select your encryption level. If you're absolutely insane, you can choose paranoid level, which is 521 bit certificate, um, 384 or 256. Depending on what size certificates that you actually go with, um, it will limit the speed of your data transfer because it does have to encrypt every single packet that's going through with this certificate. Uh, so I just use 256 as its base. Select my public IP. You can use a DNS if you have a public DNS, uh, something like no IP or duck DNS, or if you have your own site from Namecheap or um, uh, GoDaddy or something like that, you can do a DD client to pull in any uh, IP changes. So that works pretty well. So we'll just use my public IP since that's what we're using now. Uh, we select our DNS provider. Google's fine, it's 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Which mainly the entire internet runs on and no custom search domain and then we're good so now everything is 100 percent complete with the installation and now all we need to do is add our profiles and it's going to ask me to reboot uh, so i'm just going to go ahead and say no because i don't want to do that right now but we'll do high vpn add and it will give you a bunch of different options you can do this in one string set or you can do it in a uh, option basis. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, Justin Windows for my client name. I want my certificate to last for 
a long time and my password and again and then it pulls out all of the key certificates um, and the TLS private key to create your VPN. So we can actually see that it created this particular one. If I wanted to add another user, say I wanted to add Justin Mac. Same duration. I now have two separate ones that I can pull. Um, you don't have to have a, you don't have to have one for each machine. Uh, you can use one for your phone, your Mac, your Windows PC, your um, site to site VPN. It doesn't necessarily matter. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over to my Mac. And I'm going to say, okay, I have this Mac open VPN and I want to go ahead and install this to, um, Tunnelbick. And basically what Tunnelbick is, is a, this is the open VPN client for Macs in general. So I'm just going to say all users and I'll type in my password, my Mac. And I've got a connection point right here, just being my Mac. Now I haven't opened this up to the entire world. Uh, next up is the Windows environment. Um, if I just hop over to my Raspberry Pi, which is running at my IP address of 43. Uh, this is just a really basic subnet that I brought up uh, just for this demo. I go into core and open VPNs. I can grab this particular VPN, just Windows, and I can import this into OpenVPN Connect. And then I have OpenVPN Connect running whenever I start the machine. And then I can just go ahead and connect to it if it was open to the public. But that's, a, that's to get from your hotspot, sorry, from anywhere you're working. Um, I like to go and work at Starbucks, for instance, whenever I don't have a ton of meetings. That allows me to go to Starbucks, log into my VPN at home. If I need to access one of the shares on my computers at home to pull up a document that I forgot, I can do that if I need to make sure all of my information isn't being sniffed out you know, from the clients that I'm working on. So usernames and passwords or anything like that are all fair game whenever you're out in public connected to some sort of public network. Uh, this basically eliminates all of that because you're using a tunnel system. Uh, you're tunneling all your traffic from your machine to your whatever machine is sitting at your house. Uh, the same thing works for uh, say like NordVPN or private internet access or PIA, but it goes through a different methodology of they supply the endpoints and you connect to the endpoints. So you're anonymous, um, but that's all you get is the anonymity and well, the anonymity and the tunnel, but you don't get access to anything that's like say at your home or at your, uh, in your own network at your house. Now this demo we did was for setting up a Raspberry Pi at your own location, uh, at your home network. You may not have a Raspberry Pi, so this can be done on other machines. So if you have like an old Windows computer or old Linux computer or just something that's maybe just sitting around that you wanna install Linux on, this would be pretty easy to get it up and running and get a, uh, just a VPN set up at your home network. So you saw uh, the OpenVPN Connect and the TunnelBlick, um, but this is uh, also shows the other VPN clients that they have for like NordVPN, just kind of some images there. But uh, your VPN clients are what you'll have on your machine that's actually connecting to the VPN. So this is what you'll go through for connecting to the VPN that you set up. And most paid solutions will have their own type of uh, client. And you're just talking about different hardware. Um, you have different routers that you can set up VPNs on. Um, I know Asus routers, you can install OpenVPN on those, or you can do uh, different VPNs, built-in VPNs that they have. Uh, Ubiquity, any of those routers have them. Um, and then you also have your router software uh, that you can put in there that will have these VPNs built into them as well. Um, the Asus routers offer an open VPN solution or um, a PBTP. Uh, type VPN. Um, there are several different types of VPN, but there are uh, some of them are easy to use and others. Um, TP-Link routers are OpenVPN or PPTP as well. 
And then Ubiquity uses L2TP, which is a higher connection level, um, the same thing that the MyTrock routers use as well. Uh, then the software is actually things that you can install as, um, say, a virtual machine, or if you have if you're into technology and you have a network stack and you want to have more visibility over your uh, your network as a whole, you can use something like PFSense and it has VPNs built into it, ClearOS, Mytrock OS, or uh, Zero Shell. Um, all of these are very easy, well, they're relatively easy to use prosumer type operating systems that are built for routers. So those have a lot more functionality as far as your, your routing for your VPNs. If you want to route to specific VLANs or whatnot, they'll allow you to do that easier. These aren't something that you're going to set up on your Windows computer at home without some additional setup steps. So this isn't as easy as the, uh, the VPN demo that we did earlier. Our main purpose in doing this is to let you use your computers in public locations a little bit safer than you may have been before. I mean, I'm, I know not everybody has set up VPNs and knows about VPNs and you may have been in public locations and using just wide open networks. So hopefully this will keep everybody a little bit safer in the future. All right. And that's it for, uh, for our share the wealth. Uh